Hi, I'm Daryl Klassen, and I'm back this time. If you like the stuff or if you enjoyed what you uh, heard or read, or if it really even just piqued your interest a little bit about all the things in golf that people have been telling you that are screwed up, uh, then we're here on this one just to give you a little report on how to keep your tee shot in play. I'm going to show you here, when you read the material that we're offering you today, um, show you how to keep your golf ball in play, keep it in the fairway most of the time, and how to add a few yards to your shot. Now, there's nobody that, playing golf that wouldn't like to keep the ball in the fairway and add some yardage to their shot, and that's what we're going to do here in the tee shot report. It's really pretty simple stuff. Uh, the biggest thing that golf pros teach that is, that's really, really, really bad information is to keep your club face square. Because what happens is all of you are trying to keep your club face square to your target. Now if I were sitting here, if my hand were my club head, if I keep it square to my target as I rotate, it's changing in relation to me. Because to be square to me, <laughs> it's that simple. And in reality, what we have in a golf swing, we've got a golf club that's moving around a circle. And if it's square to the target at impact and the body has rotated 30, 45 degrees or more, this golf club is 40, 35, 45 degrees wide open to your body. And as a result, you're gonna be hitting slices and blocked and push shots all the time. Why do you think well, nearly 90% of all the golfers in the world slice the ball? And then there again, the famous guys on TV and in the magazines will tell you, you're not getting your club face square. Well, that's the biggest bunch of baloney in the world. Plus, on top of that, this driver right here has got a Fujikura shaft. That's an expensive rascal, but it also has a rubber grip. It's what we all use. I can take this golf club and hold it in my hand, hold the grip still. I can twist this club head by as much as seven to 10 degrees. So with an off-centered shaft on this face coming at 90 miles an hour, 120, whatever you swing, you hit the ball here with the shaft coming here. I don't care how tight you hold the handle and you don't want it tight in the first place. This thing pops open anywhere from 7 to 12 degrees, and you paid a lot of money for that golf club. Now, the shaft that the pros use on tour doesn't have this. It's not that kind of shaft. <laughs> you can't, number one, they don't sell a shaft they let them play that they give them for free. And if they did, Donald Trump and a couple of his buddies would be the only ones that could afford to dog on things. I've hit balls with them before. It's a whole new ball game, okay? So there are some reasons that, that aren't really totally your fault why you've had trouble keeping the golf ball in the fairway. And all I want to do in this report called the Tira Shot Report is show you why you've had trouble keeping it in the fairway. Now, as far as yardage goes, guy of Friday, I've heard, I'm not going to use your name, Jim McLean and Dean Rymouth. <laughs> I've heard these guys in seminars for PGA and on Golf Channel say, besides what we're trying to do is explode all of our energy right into that golf ball. I'm telling you what, that even makes me excited. <laughs> Problem is, it's terrible physics. Because in order to transfer the motion of this golf club into the golf ball, we have to be accelerating when we get to the ball. In physics, it's called kinetic energy. Don't take my word for it. Go downtown and find any engineer you want and ask him to explain kinetic energy and how that relates to the transfer of energy of a golf club to a golf ball or a moving object into a still object. He'll tell you that in order to have your most efficient transfer of energy, you must be accelerating when you reach the object. I was riding home one day from the golf course after work, after about 15 years. I was a great player, trust me, not a problem playing. But I wanted to be able to teach my students better. And I got to thinking, how do I say that to my students? Oh my gosh, it can't be that simple. But everything I do is that simple. If I'm still accelerating when I get to the golf ball, then I've got to be going faster somewhere over here than I'm going at the golf ball. Think about that just one moment and you go, Oh, why didn't I think of that? That's too true. How can you be accelerating when you get the golf ball and still be blasting all of your power right at it? The two don't mix. So if we're still accelerating when we get the golf ball, then there's a point out here somewhere where the club is going its fastest. And what that feels like to me to teach it to you, I call it a power point where, bam, 
I'm hitting an object out here somewhere with my real punch. If I'm hitting something there with my real punch, then I'm, I am naturally still accelerating here. I'm going to cover that for you in this tee shot report. The important part is learn how to hit that point with your maximum strength of your swing that you want to use and with your club head at 45 degrees close to the line of flight. I'll explain that in the report. It'll shock you because that's the place where it's square to my lap because of the natural rotation of the golf swing. I'm going to show you what that looks like so you can take a good look, okay? So we take the club here and we swing it to the power point. I'm going to let the camera shoot that so that you can see it. Now when I make that swing, you can hear the swish over here, not over here. The golf ball will be here. You hear the big swish there. I'm coming to you with it so you see it. And I hear it way out here with this driver with a little breeze coming in. Okay? Now, what I want you to learn to do from there, I'm going to show you where the club face belongs in that process. So, you come right over here. Good. Okay, great. So that when we are into that power point, the golf club is 45 degrees into that line absolutely perfectly. Now, bring your camera. Now I am. Okay, excellent. This is the place at the power point. You can see the goal line at the power point where the corner of the golf club comes into the power point. That makes the lap at about 45 degrees to the target because target line is here. And the power point, then I'm hitting a not square, I'm hitting at 45 degrees closed to the target line. Okay? And that's what gives us our golf shot. Okay, here we go again. And I'll see this come into the towel as it's rotating in. Good. So the club comes in to the power point with the toe leading. That's where we want our, that's how we hit straight long shots. Okay. Now, as we come to the power point, when our mind is on the power point, then our lower body automatically begins to rotate there so that we get the club into the power point with the lap facing there at the same time. So we go right on past the golf ball with our strength to the power point. Now let's go that, just my lower body, so they see my lap. So as we come, when our mind is on the power point, the lower body automatically rotates to the power point to hit it. And so the golf club will come sailing right into it, and the lap will be facing it perfectly. Good. Okay, we power pointed. That was good stuff we got. That's your power point and that's how you hit it. Because at that point with my lower body rotation in the swing, the golf club has re-squared itself to my lap and to my body. So that in reality, the golf club at that point is still square to me, not square to the target. It's really a biggie. You'll see that in the, uh, uh, you'll hear how I really describe that in the report. This will change your game, I promise. Thanks. Now next time when you come back, I'm going to show you about consistency and we're going to just talk about consistency. You show me one golfer in 45 million that doesn't want to be more consistent. Touring pros, you can go to Phil, Tiger, anyone you want it to and say, what's your number one desire? If you could do one thing, what it would be? Even those guys would say, I'd like to be a little more consistent. <laughs> We've got the wrong definition for consistency because all of you think they're consistent already. So I'm gonna cover consistency next time.